Hi, everybody. It's Mrs. Sater and the Funky, Funky, Chunky Monkey here to teach you today about the Ten Commandments. Wow, did you hear that, guys? We're going to talk about the Ten Commandments today. <laughs> it's so exciting. So before we start with our new lesson, though, we got to review a little bit from what we talked about last week. Let's see here. Who was that guy we talked about? The one that had the staff and talked to the Pharaoh. He was the guy that stuttered. Hmm, do you remember who it was? Oh, yes, Mrs. Stater. That was Moses. We talked about him as a baby and then as a grown up. Yes, and he's back again today. Let's see here. Do I have baby Moses with me today? I do. Look at, do you remember the story when he was a baby and his mama stuck him in? Um, the Nile in the little basket and he floated down the Nile and the Pharaoh's daughter found him and she took him home and raised him as a king and he grew up and he was pretty privileged until he realized that he was one of the Hebrew people, one of the Israelites. And when he found that out and he saw how the Pharaoh's men were treating the Hebrews, Ooh, he didn't like it. No, he knocked the soldier off and he died. Yes, remember that? And he died and then Moses ran for his life. And he went out in the forest, well, not the forest, but in the desert. And he met his, his wife, Zephora, I think was her name. And uh, Moses spoke to him in the bush and said, go back and help my people get free. So last week, do you remember? We made our little movie of Moses and the burning bush. There he is. Moses goes back and talks to the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go. And so God sends all the 10 plagues and the frogs came and the gnats and the flies and the water, the river turned to blood and all those plagues happened. And then ooh, the angel of death came and he took the firstborn boy of every family unless you had the blood of the lamb on your door you see the blood on the door and then pharaoh's son died and he was really mad so he told the people to get out and go but he wasn't then he wasn't happy that they left so he sent his soldiers to capture him and moses helped the people escape across the red sea he put his staff in there and the sea parted and the people got across but what happened to the soldiers they all got washed away in the water. Yes, and hopefully you all got a chance to play my quiz. I hope so, because um, we got a brand new quiz this week, and we're talking about the Ten Commandments, and we still have Moses. Go figure. He lasts a long time. So our scripture this week actually starts like in um, Exodus. That's the second book of the Bible. It starts in Exodus, uh, around Exodus 19, and it goes all the way up to Exodus 39. So we do not have time to read it all. So I've got my handy dandy Bible here. And there's a couple of things that um, I did want to cover today uh, before you play the, the Ten Commandments game. So let's see here. Um, you should have gotten your little packet in the mail, hopefully, the stone tablets. And um, uh, let's start the story. So what happens is Moses is grown up and he's leading the people to the promised land like God had promised. And sometimes the people kind of complain a lot. Ooh, what do they complain about? Well, they just like to complain, kind of like you and I. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's too rainy. We haven't had enough rain. You name it. Uh, the food was too dry. There wasn't enough water. They just complained a lot. But God kept talking to Moses. and. Um, Moses always listened to God. And so God had some special rules that he wanted to give to the people. So Moses climbed up this big, tall mountain called Mount Sinai. Can you say that, boys and girls? Mount Sinai. Yes, he went up on Mount Sinai. And when he got up to the top, it got covered with smoke. And God actually spoke to Moses up on Mount Sinai. Um. How long was he up there? I don't know, Mr. Stater. How long did he stay up there? He was up there for 40 days. And the people, well, they started thinking Moses had left them. 
the people didn't always make the best choices, kind of like you and I sometimes when we're left at home and there's nobody there to watch us and there's candy in the cupboard. Sometimes we don't make the best choices. Well, the people didn't. You know what they did? What did they do, Miss Theta? They built a golden calf. Because in Egypt, it was real common to worship different animals. So they built, they took all of their gold jewelry, you know, all their necklaces and stuff, and they melted it down, and they made this big, beautiful golden calf. I think we might have a picture of it in our uh, little packet. Can you see that golden calf? Well, they made the golden calf while Moses was up on the Mount Sinai. And God knows what's going on because God always knows what's going on. And what do you think God thought about the people worshiping, bowing down and praising this crazy golden calf? Oh, was he really sad? Oh, yeah, he was more than sad. He was angry. Do you know what he told Moses? No, what did he say to Moses? He told Moses that he would just destroy everybody and Moses could start a brand new, a brand new family. Really? Yeah, but Moses didn't want everybody to die. So Moses begs God. He's like, oh, no, God, remember your promise? You promised Abraham. You promised Isaac. You promised that they would be a great nation. If you kill all their grandchildren, how are they going to be a great nation? He said, the Israel, the, the Egyptians will think that you brought the Israelites out in the desert just to kill them. And then the Egyptians won't even respect you. So God got to thinking about what Moses said, because God and Moses are pretty much buddies. And God's like, yeah, I didn't really mean to, to destroy all my people, but I am really upset with them. So maybe I should give them some rules. Do you know what the rules were that God gave to Moses to bring down to the people? I've got a clue. Can you see them? This is Mrs. Sater's version of the Ten Commandments. Oh, I might have said the name. They're called the Ten Commandments. And they're ten very important rules that God gave to the people. All right. So the first three kind of have to do with how the people should treat God. Do you know what the first three commandments are? We learned them last year, but it's been a long time since we've talked about them. Oh, Miss Peter, I think the first commandment is to worship the God and have no other gods besides him. Yes. On my thing here, it says, have no other gods besides me. I'm a jealous God. That's pretty easy. That means uh, your video games and your cell phone are not more important than your relationship with God. And I spend way too much time on my cell phone. I like to play video games. Yeah. Well, they're not as important as spending time with God. All right. The second commandment is to um, make sure that you use God's name the right way. Don't take his name in vain. Okay. Don't be saying bad words with God's name. He doesn't like it. And the third commandment has to do with keeping one day of the week special. We call it the Sabbath day and you're supposed to keep it holy. Okay. Don't do a whole lot of work. Don't be mean to people. That's your day to rest and enjoy God's gifts. Okay. So those first three commandments have to do with your relationship to God. Then number four is my most favorite commandment. Do you know what number four is? Oh, no, never forget it, Miss Peter. It's to honor your father and mother. Yes, it is to honor your father and mother. You have to do what they say. If mom says, don't run out in the street because there's a car coming and you run out in the street, guess what's going to happen? You will get run over by the car. So please don't run out in the street when mama says not to. Okay, fair. So number four is kind of common sense. Listen to what mom and dad say. Number five is you shall not kill. Number six. You shall not commit adultery. What does that mean, Miss Sater? Well, that's kind of complicated, but that means if you get married, you have to stay married to that same person and be faithful and, and true to that person. Okay? No cheating. Um, number seven, you shall not steal. Number eight, you shall not bear false witness. That means tell lies about other people. Uh, number nine, you shall not covet 
your neighbor's wife. And number 10, don't want to steal or covet your neighbor's goods because God gave you just what you need. So those are the 10 commandments. Sometimes they're in a little bit different order. Not everybody puts them in the same order. But if you look in your Bible, in Exodus 20, it lists all 10 commandments. So, and it doesn't tell you which number is which. They're just kind of all jumbled up there together. So it's a little bit confusing. I can show you my Bible, but it's really small print. Do you see that? Exodus 20 is the 10 commandments. It's also in Deuteronomy. Um, the other thing that I need to cover with you guys today is, hmm, uh, oh yeah, so Moses was up on the mountain. He was up there for 40 days. So, and that's why the people, they were afraid he wasn't going to come back. So they built this golden cap. And this is in your little packet. You need to color him so he's golden. All right. So, um, uh, but while he's up there, God gives him those 10 commandments. And he comes back down the mountain. And when he comes down the mountain, and he sees the golden calf. What do you think Moses' face looked like? He was mad. Really, really mad. He threw the Ten Commandments down on the ground and they broke. That's exactly right. He threw the Ten Commandments down on the ground and they broke. And he took that golden calf and he melted it down. <laughs> till it was all dust. And then he took the dust from the golden calf and he sprinkled it in the water and he made all the people drink the water and he made them promise that they would never worship anything but the real God again. Ooh, that's a good idea. And I think that people really did feel badly. I mean, we all make mistakes. Anyhow, um, ooh, I'm talking too long. I'm already at 12 minutes. Um, there is a quiz game I want you guys to play. And uh, where's my packet here? I think I've lost it. We do need to say a prayer. Miss Cedar is terrible about saying prayers when we're done. Oh, when you get your packet, what you're going to do, guys, is you have to cut out. I colored mine because I think it's kind of boring. You're going to have to cut out Moses. All right. And uh, where is Moses? Oh, he's on the other side. Let's see here. Help me out, Spunky. Do you see Moses there? This is uh, This is Moses right here. And we have to cut on the we have to cut on the blue lines, sorry. And then on the dotted lines, we fold it. And we need to. It says to put a um, straw in between there to make a puppet. But I don't have any straws. I have lots of sticks. So I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to put a stick in there to make Moses into a puppet. And then we have to cut on the blue line here. And um, we'll slide, this is Mount Sinai here, and Moses is going to go up there and talk to God, and he's going to get the Ten Commandments, and then he'll slide back down and talk to the people, okay? All right, so really quickly, um, boy, you know what? I don't even have my scissors out here, so I think you guys are going to have to cut that out. Tomorrow, I'll go over it too when I see you um, in our Google Meets. You guys have a wonderful week. We are getting so close to Thanksgiving and being grateful for all the gifts that God has given us. Um, let's end with our closing prayer, you guys. And it is, hold on just a second here. Dear God, thank you for the gifts of your Ten Commandments that show us how to live with you and with each other. Help us follow your words so that we can love you and love each other today and always. Amen. Thanks, guys.